Today I'm at Kru Kung Museum. Kru is teacher in Thai, Kung is the guy's name. This guy was a teacher, obviously. And, but this guy is different to most teachers. Basically, he's been collecting all his life and that's been his passion to collect things over the years. He said he's not interested in business, anything like that. He's just wanted to collect things, get his kids through university, of course, which by the look of the pictures on the wall has been very successful. And he's collected and collected over 50, 60 years. And now he's turned his house into a museum and opened it to the public. And basically this is a big traditional house and let me say first of all we're about 45 kilometers out of Rayong just off the road to Chantaburi so you get an idea roughly where I am but anyway he's turned this place into a museum and he's themed it out into different sections I'm sitting outside here and outside he's got like his cars and his vehicles and things like that you can see here really nice old Mercedes there's another Mercedes behind the camera in the cafe and there's a Willys Jeep here just to the right of the camera there's a Datsun with the old style bus back on it further down you can see a horse and cart there's a motorized motorbike and cart as well there's various motorbikes tuk-tuks bicycles there's a tractor there's other things like fuel pumps this big thing that looks like it's come out of a petrol station and so that's the outside bit when you go inside it's on two floors and it also spreads out the back as well and he's themed it out into all different themes so you've got like a barber shop we've well actually got two you've got a ladies barber shop a gents barber shop there's like a soft drinks cafe there's a food court and as you'll see the food court is the one thing that doesn't look like it's changed that much over the years compared to street food now he's got like convenience stores he's got a kids toy store he's got a classroom he's got like an old bedroom with the drapes and the mosquito screens it's got a kitchen it's got all these sort of things it's been themed out into into different areas there's a photo studio there's a like a dressmaker's room and there's a kids playroom it, so he's kind of collected all these diverse things put them together and created a lot of themed rooms and then upstairs he's it's a big open plan floor like a traditional house and he's got put all sections of things he's collected like telephones like typewriters like fire extinguishers like gramophones tvs hi-fi cassette players portable cassette players walkmans all these kind of things that he's put together and there's other things there's banknotes there's stamps there's coins there's badges there's medals there's old lanterns there's big old ceramic pots all these things and I'm going to walk you through it all and see this house and it really kind of takes you back 40 or 50 years and you're back in how a traditional Thai house was and you can see how they live there's no air conditioning there's no glass in the windows so you're going to get a lot of mosquitoes coming in it's pretty hot in there as well but it really is a walk back into time through the door you walk straight into a big lobby which has got about half a dozen pillars this is a pretty big house and so it's structurally it's got pillars and it's wide and spacious and there's various big objects there's a grandfather clock well actually two or three of them but this is really nice big old classic touring BMW motorbike so it's a cool machine this is really from the great days gone by and it's nice to have this sitting here in the lobby there's a smaller Vespa scooter next to it there's an electric motorcycle a classic electric one so there's all various motorized objects as well in the lobby to start things off A 
as soon as you walk through the front door, the first room on your left, it's a lady's hairdresser and it really looks the part. You can see this big hair blower dryer from years ago. They used to be in every salon in rows. They're long gone, but that's from the period 30, 40 years ago. And you can see all the little small handheld hair dryers that you buy from the supermarket or whatever now. And you can see there's more on the walls all around. And there's all the fittings and fixtures you'd expect from a lady's hairdresser. It is really like the first room I've walked straight back 30, 40 years immediately. The first room, the lady's hairdresser. The second one is a gent's hairdresser. And immediately, this is exactly in period. You can see the chairs that go up and down, the footrests, all the scissors, the knives, the razors, everything like that for cutting gentlemen's hair. And again, walked back 40, 50 years when I walked in that room straight away for a gent's hairdresser. This is from 40, 50 years ago as well. which is styled as like a little food court with different styles of food. And it really hasn't changed very much. That's the interesting thing. When you come straight come in here, immediately you don't think you're very far away from the current day if you eat street food on the soy. It's all very, very similar. You can see they've laid out on the table here, the chopsticks, this style of spoon, the ceramic dish. We all use all them today. The relish trays, they're exactly the same. And some of the other stuff, like the Mujum pot, that's identical. The Guaidao drum, the big drum where they keep it all hot in a massive amount, that's not really changed much. What's changed is that the food carts like that and the fruit trolley, which I put the camera on, they're wooden. Now they'd be steel. The chopsticks would be plastic and you throw them away after a while. So those kind of details have changed but on the whole it's pretty much the same as if you walked in the street food store nowadays to eat there's very very little difference so the actual street food has not changed in half a century or more This room, well, it's pretty obvious it's a classroom. And again, it's quite cool. It's got really old battered wooden desks. There's the old style leather school satchels. This is the teacher's desk. There's a big old stapler. There's a duster for wiping the blackboard down behind me. There's a pencil sharpener where you stick your pencil in and grind it round. And there's a hole punch as well. So kind of all the things that you'd expect from a school. This is really old going back as well. There's wooden slats, there's no air conditioning, there's no walls. This is a really old traditional classroom.
like the shopkeeper of half a century ago, but there's no tills, no calculators, no points of sale, no taking credit cards, no electronics at all. In fact, this is how he's counting. And we've got a big book where he writes in everything and the prices and what's sold. And a really old telephone, which isn't connected. This is exactly going back a long, long time when accounting, when the shopkeeper was at the hub of the shop. It really is something very, very different to how we are today when we go into the 7-Eleven or something like that. This is really old style and I like this big solid wooden desk as well. It's very cool, very chunky. You can see here, all the cigarette packets displayed like this, the tobacco next to them. In fact, there's a tobacco pipe here and the papers. That's something that you couldn't display today like that. The laws don't allow you to, but you can see it's all displayed like it will be in an old shop. And down here you can see toothpaste, toiletries, stuff you get from the pharmacy, all of it laid out, all of this collected years and years and years ago and kept. And this whole area, which is like a shop, like a pharmacy, like a convenience store shop, it's so much old packets and old bottles of soaps, of washing powders, of liquids, all this sort of thing. And he's collected them for years and years, for a long, long time. And now it lays out and it really feels like you've gone in a shop from 50 or 60 years ago. Now have a quick look around the top floor and you can see it's a huge open plan room with wooden floors, really traditional style bare boards. And you can see the windows, which unfortunately the light is pouring in and not making the light in this video very good, but they're just open windows with wooden shutters. So you've got no air conditioning in here at all. It's pretty hot, it's pretty humid. You're gonna get a lot of mosquitoes in here at night. So kind of things have changed the way you live upstairs now. You try to keep the mosquitoes out, you have air conditioning everywhere, but if and the place has all been laid out into different sections of stuff he's collected. This room on the end here, you can see it's full of clocks, all different types of wall clocks. And if we walk along here, you can see all these containers where you put hot and cold drinks in and plates and food containers that you used to take your packed lunch with you years ago. And this second room here now, it's full of ceramic pots. You can see some huge pots on the floor here and you can see other ones in the cabinets here and glass things. So this is really all the ceramic type of stuff that you had, the pottery that you had years ago, which a lot of it's been replaced by plastic now. We'll walk around here a little bit. This end room is full of all brass plates and brass instruments. And now we have a look in here, there's a big glass cabinet. It's full of lanterns, old style lanterns. And if I spin you up, you'll see the whole ceiling is all covered in lanterns as well. And then also around me, you can see this display cabinets. They're full of coins, they're full of medals, they're full of badges all these sort of things he's collected up over the years. There's more grandfather clocks up here as well. And then in these cabinets, we've got loads of irons out right from the very early steam irons, right through to the more recent ones. We've got a lot of pots and pans, little crockery here where you'd put your salt and your pepper cellars. And here we've got a lot of like boxes, wooden packing crates, wicker baskets that you would put your food in. And let's spin around and have a look in this room here. 
This room here, it's full of typewriters. On the end, you can see the old fire extinguisher and the fire buckets. In the middle here, you've got all scales for weighing food, for weighing other things. And you've got some scales for standing on as well. And we've got a load of more typewriters in here. We've got these machines that you used to use in a shop to sell things, to do receipts. We've got some very old weighing scales on top here where you balance, counterbalance them out. We've got some magnifying glasses here. Abacus is on the wall there, how you used to count. And then let's have a look in the last room. The last room is quite interesting. It's full of telephones, TVs, audio, hi-fi, that sort of thing. And it's really old. You can see these old radios from years and years ago. And right if we spin up to the top, you can see all these, sorry, let me spin it a bit better. You can see all these small portable TVs are probably all black and white. And here is quite interesting because what he's actually done is collect a lot of early mobile phones. So you can see all these old mobile phones. There's a fairly famous Motorola brick phone. There's a cabinet here full of the ubiquitous Nokia phones that we all used to have years ago that were indestructible pretty much. And in fact, this page is here as well. That's a forgotten thing. And right the very earliest mobile phones were effectively like a car battery you were carrying around with a phone handset on top. There's a few of them here as well. And if we look in here, there's a very, very early phone. Then there's some musical instruments here. There's a trumpet, trombone, there's violins, there's um, accordions, all that sort of thing. And on top as well, you've got more portable radios, the radio cassette players you used to take to the beach. And if we spin around here, we can see there's a lot more old fashioned TVs. They're getting a little bit smaller and more modern. Down here, we've got some gramophones with their big speakers on them. Let's see, we've got some mixing decks here. So you attach your speakers, you would adjust everything. We've got a tape player here. Again, I apologize, the light streaming in. And behind, we've got all these old telephones as well. And right in the middle, we've got a piano, so an electronic piano that people would learn to play. So that's pretty much his top floor. He's basically chosen to collect an awful lot of different things. And then he's laid them out into sections and he's clearly been collecting for years and years because you can see i mean you can see here the money boxes all the different sizes how he's gone through how he's collected over the years you can see how he's thought about what he'd collect picked them up bought them and bought them over maybe 20 30 40 years and they're all laid out here and down here if i can just tip the camera down we've got locks so kind of a lot of stuff here that he has really gone out and collected more grandfather clocks and there's some big packing case some like travel trunks from the days when you went on steamships and on dc3s and things like that so it's pretty cool we've got a modern fan here which is good because it's kind of keeping me from passing out with the heat up here but this is a real snapshot into a Thai house from 50, 60 years ago. And it's cool to see it. I'd rather live with air conditioning and also without any glass in the windows and just wooden shutters. The mosquitoes will be streaming in here. So I'm not sure it's that comfortable to live. You'd need to have like the room at the back where they have a mosquito net over the tent. But it's really interesting and this place really authentically takes a big step back into time.
This is a traditional piece of public transport, the motorized rickshaw. It's got a motorcycle front end and it's attached to a pretty traditional rickshaw back, which is wooden and it's got some steel on it. But the first thing you notice, it's huge. It's really long from back to front, at least a B segment car, maybe C segment style. So it's a pretty long, pretty big thing and pretty heavy, I think. And it looks like it's got a lot of power. It's got a big Daihatsu engine under here and it's got a radiator, the alternator here. How you can drive this thing without overheating or burning yourself, I've no idea. But it's a big, strong thing and you don't see these anymore. You still see the bicycle rickshaws around in some places, but these motorized ones are long gone now. I've never seen one anywhere where I go. So it's kind of nice to see this. No museum in Thailand that wants to give a nod to history will be complete without having one of these. It's a duck duck. They are a ubiquitous vehicle in Thailand. They're a national symbol. In fact, in one of the Miss World type contests, someone dressed up in a tuk tuk uniform and everyone connected worldwide that that's the Thai national symbol almost. And although these go back to the dawn of motoring here, they are still relevant. So this is a piece of history that's a living history. If you go into Bangkok city centre, you'll see these everywhere. If you go in the suburbs, you'll still see a few around. And different towns around the country, they all have tuk-tuks. And it's a really basic early piece of motoring, but it's still the tuk-tuk. It's got a motorcycle type handlebar here. It's got a gear, really rough gear stick with a golf ball stuck on it. Two pedals, accelerator and brake. I think this is probably a choke cable and it's got an ammeter so you can tell if your battery's going flat. It's a really basic piece of engineering. The speedometer is showing 180, although I think this speedometer in this case has been taken out of a car. If you can get a tuk-tuk to 180 you'll be doing pretty well. But this is really a symbol of Thai motoring, of Thai transport, public transport. So it fits well in this museum for sure.